Hello and welcome to Business Matters at Hindu with me, K. Bharat Kumar. Something curious has been happening in Indian industry with regard to hydrogen, namely the production of green hydrogen. Consider this. Last year, Reliance Industries and the Adani Group at different points in time committed to significant investments in this sector with an aim to bring down the cost per unit of green hydrogen. In February this year, the Government of India notified a national policy on green hydrogen. In April, renowned names like LNT, Indian Oil Corporation and Renew Power came together to set up a joint venture to contribute to the green hydrogen sector. Last week, Total of France is said to have committed to significant investments in Adani Group's green energy business. Why is all this happening? What is this frenzy of activity suddenly? Before we get to the details, we need a little bit of background, some economics, some science and some environment talk. Stay with me, we'll get there. To begin with, what is green hydrogen? Green hydrogen is that which is produced without the emission of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. One uses renewable energy to electrolyze water. Water, as you know, is two parts of hydrogen and one part of oxygen. So when you electrolyze water, the hydrogen and oxygen are separated and we are able to extract hydrogen. So you use renewable energy to electrolyze water and the hydrogen thus generated is called green hydrogen because there is no carbon dioxide emitted into the environment. That brings us to the question, why is it important enough for India to have a policy on green hydrogen? Use of hydrogen in industry is not new. It's been happening for ages. For example, this morning, if you had a meal and took a vehicle to your office or work, hydrogen would have touched your lives. How? Because hydrogen is used in the manufacture of ammonia that goes into fertilizer production, which in turn helps put food on your table. Hydrogen is also used in oil refining, especially to remove excess sulfur in the production of petrol and diesel, which are fuels that power your vehicles. But the problem is, large-scale production of hydrogen involves the use of methane, which is found in natural gas. As high school chemistry would teach you, methane is CH4, one part carbon and four parts hydrogen. When it interacts with water in a two-step process, but I'm simplifying it for ease of understanding, when it interacts with water in steam form, the carbon in methane and oxygen in water combine to get released as carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Hydrogen is isolated for industrial use. Do you know how much this production process contributes in terms of carbon dioxide emissions into the atmosphere? 830 million tons of carbon dioxide. To put that in context, it's all of the emissions that UK and Indonesia together account for per year. The point here to make green hydrogen is to use renewable electricity. We talked about use of electricity to electrolyze water earlier in this discussion. Here we have to use renewable electricity so that the whole process is green. You cannot burn coal, generate electricity, and then say, you know, I'm able to produce green hydrogen now. India has committed to going net zero emissions by 2070. It has no choice but to incentivize the production of green hydrogen and do its best to make it as inexpensive as possible. So how does the national green hydrogen policy help? The policy that was notified this February, the government offered several benefits, two of which stand out to me. One is availability of land for green hydrogen producers. The second is waiving off of charges for interstate transmission. This, industry watchers say, could bring down the cost of producing green hydrogen by 40-50%. How so? Even though India offers the lowest cost per unit of producing renewable energy, it levies a plethora of charges in terms of transmission across state borders. So if renewable energy, which requires large tracts of land to produce wind energy or solar energy, if it's produced in a remote corner of the country and has to reach an urban center, it comes at a cost. No wonder the waving off of charges has been welcomed with open arms by the industry. But it's interesting, the government has not touched upon electrolyzer production. Remember, we talked about the use of electrolyzers to electrolyze water to produce green hydrogen. Electrolyzer production has not uh, seen a mention in the Indian policy. If imported electrolyzers are replaced with indigenous ones, there is a very high chance the cost could come down further. But that's for another conversation. Why are we talking about costs here? It's because green hydrogen does not come cheap. KPMG in a recent study said that in the short term, that is leading up to the year 2030, green hydrogen costs could range between $2.5 to $6 per kg. 
and that in the long term that is by the year 2050 it could come down to one dollar per kg and that is when it becomes comparable to gray hydrogen or the way traditionally hydrogen has been produced and then people would find reason to move away from hydrogen that emits carbon dioxide into the atmosphere move away from that onto green hydrogen but till then who will take it up in terms of large capacities how do economies of scale set in that is why in tandem with the national green hydrogen policy the government of india has articulated an intent to make green hydrogen purchase obligations mandatory this is similar to the renewable energy purchase obligations right when renewable energy was new as a concept some large scale power users were mandated to use some portion of the electricity that they needed in the form of renewable energy then economies of scale set in and then cost came down likewise it is understood that the government would tag steel making fertilizer production and oil refining for the use of green hydrogen we talked about fertilizer production and oil refining earlier but steel making steel making currently does not use even gray hydrogen but it's responsible the whole industry steel making industry globally is responsible for between 7 and 8 percent of emissions of all the carbon dioxide that goes into the air because of our industrial processes so if steel making started using green hydrogen it's that much less of greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere how does this happen again a little bit of science steel uses iron ore as raw material iron ore as you know is nothing but iron and oxygen it's oxidized iron feo so if green hydrogen is made to interact in a chemical reaction with feo that is iron ore it's possible to isolate the iron and make the hydrogen interact with oxygen and just produce pure water in the process the iron that is isolated can be used for steel making so because of these net zero commitments and so on it's natural for a country to commit to certain green processes but why are private players interested let's take a step back and look at demand for hydrogen gray or green does not matter but hydrogen for industrial use india alone uses 7 million tons of hydrogen currently this is estimated to go up to 28 million tons by 2050 the international energy agency estimates that the current production of hydrogen touches about 51 million tons estimated to go up to 73 million tons by 2030 just do the math if hydrogen can be produced at one dollar per kg that is green hydrogen the market is 73 billion dollars last year reliance industries committed 75000 crore worth of investment into setting up four giga factories in the renewable energy ecosystem one of these factories is meant for the production of electrolyzers which will be used in the production of green hydrogen chairman mr mukesh ambani talked about bringing down the cost of green hydrogen to 2 dollars per kg in the medium term and eventually he talked about a 111 framework which is green hydrogen at the price of one dollar per kg in one decade the adani group too has committed investments adani green energy is less than a decade old but it commanded the market capitalization of over three lakh crore last week if a company is anyway into renewable energy production it's only one step away from using it for the production of green hydrogen so you do the math so what does all of this mean to you as an end consumer lots and there are two parts to this answer First, let's talk about solutions that are far out and may not find immediate widespread use. Even though Minister for Road Transport, Mr. Nitin Gadkari, recently drove a hydrogen-powered vehicle to Parliament, maybe to signal a shift for government's affinity away from conventional electric vehicles towards hydrogen-powered vehicles, widespread use by the public is still far away. Hydrogen-powered cars have been piloted and used in select countries. There are advantages and disadvantages. The advantage being that is that you can use hydrogen. to fill your fuel tank as quickly as you would with traditional fuels but the flip side is hydrogen powered cars are very costly to make Re- in a recent tweet mr elon musk whose tesla incorporated makes among the most sought after electrically chargeable vehicles talked about the use of hydrogen fuel cells to power cars as extremely silly when russia invaded ukraine earlier this year the wheat exports from those two nations plummeted for obvious reasons the focus was on the war and not on agriculture output India estimated that it would have a surplus of wheat and was looking forward to exporting more and making the best of this global opportunity. But guess what? A succession of heat waves hit us and wheat output was lesser than what we'd anticipated. So instead of counting the foreign exchange that we could have earned by our exports, the government had to bring about a wheat export ban. 
what caused this wheat output issue? Climate change, clearly. Climate change is not like a volcano exploding 20,000 kilometers away, where you feel sorry for the people in the immediate vicinity, but say that, you know, I'm not affected. Climate change is like the novel coronavirus. Nobody is safe till everybody is safe. So if we want to ease the burden or the impact of climate change upon ourselves in the next 10, 20 or 50 years, incentivizing the production of green hydrogen and trying to make it as inexpensive as possible is a good first step to take. As we go along, I'm sure we'll have more on this issue. Stay with us. Till then, goodbye.